quick revision video on periodic trends in bonding and structure. So the first thing I'm going to do is go across periods 2 and 3 and look at the types of bonding and structure involved in the elements. So starting with period 2, the first two elements there, those two metals, have giant metallic structures. So that's a 3D lattice of metal cations, positive metal ions, and delocalized electrons. And they are electrostatically attracted to each other. The next two elements both have giant covalent structures. So that's a 3D lattice of atoms covalently bonded to each other. The remaining elements, those four there, they all have simple covalent structures. So that's a small group of covalently bonded atoms, which we call a molecule, and they have relatively weak intermolecular forces between them. So moving on to period three now, the first three elements have giant metallic structures. Silicon has the giant covalent structure and the remaining four simple covalent. So what we're going to do now is use this information to explain the periodic trend in melting points. We'll start with period two and then on the next slide we'll look at period three. So the first two elements we'll talk about first there, lithium and beryllium. So lithium's melting point's not massively high, but it's certainly higher than these here. And beryllium's is quite a bit higher. So what have we got going on there? Remember, it's a giant metallic structure. So there's an increasing amount of energy needed to break the electrostatic attraction between the metal cations and the delocalized electrons in the structure. And just a quick explanation of why beryllium's melting point higher than lithium. So we've got Li plus versus Be2 plus. We've got a decreasing ionic radius, increasing number of delocalized electrons, and therefore we've got stronger metallic bonding in beryllium compared to lithium. So obviously more energy needed to break this attraction between the metal cations and the delocalized electrons. You'll notice there the next two have higher melting points again. So they have the giant covalent structure. So increasing amount of energy needed to break the covalent bonds between the atoms. So carbon's got the highest uh, melting point because carbon forms four covalent bonds. So there's more bonds to break compared to boron's three. And then moving on to the final four elements. So nitrogen through to neon, simple covalent structure a relatively small amount of energy needed to break the intermolecular forces. They are induced dipole-dipole forces because these are non-polar substances. So the intermolecular forces obviously between the molecules of N2, O2, F2, and in the case of neon, it exists as single atoms. So moving on to period three, we've got the same general profile. So we've got an increase for the first four, and then it goes quite low, but there's a bit of variation going on here. So we'll explain all of that when we come to it. So the first three elements, remember, are metals. So exactly the same as before, increasing amount of energy needed to break the electrostatic attraction between the metal cations and the delocalized electrons. So we've got Na plus versus Mg2 plus versus Al3 plus. Again, decreasing ionic radius, increasing number of delocalized electrons, and therefore stronger metallic bonding as a result. And then we've got the silicon, which is the giant covalent structure. So a large amount of energy needed to break the covalent bonds between the silicon atoms. So that gives it the very high melting point. And then moving on to the simple covalent structures, we've still got a relatively small amount of energy needed to break the intermolecular forces, the induced dipole-dipole forces. But now we need, we've got a bit more variation in the formulae of the molecules. So phosphorus exists as a P4 molecule, sulfur exists as S8, chlorine is the diatomic Cl2, and argon, uh, like neon, is just exists as atoms. So Sulfur, we get this slight rise in melting point for sulfur because it's got stronger 
induce dipole-dipole forces between the molecules. And if you remember from your intermolecular forces, the strength of the induced dipole-dipole force increases as the number of electrons in the molecule increases.